Hi everyone, my name is Faith and this video will be on Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. To begin, I'm going to explain what Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome is. It's a pretty rare neurodegenerative disease that occurs in about 0.4 to 2% of the population. There are actually two different components to this disease, so I'll describe them individually. First, we have Wernicke's encephalopathy. This is typically an acute condition, meaning that it comes on quickly and suddenly. Its symptoms present as confusion, short-term memory loss, ataxia, so trouble making voluntary movements, and ocular abnormalities, sometimes looking like jerky eye movements. Korsakoff syndrome is next, and it is chronic, meaning that it gradually comes on and has longer lasting effects. Its symptoms present as memory loss in the long term, and even psychosis, so referring to patients who experience visual and auditory hallucinations. The symptoms of Wernicke's encephalopathy typically happen first followed by the symptoms of Korsakoff syndrome as the disease progresses. Because of this, there's a lot of disagreement amongst researchers about whether these two conditions are to be considered separate or not. Because they can occur independently of one another, some researchers describe them as separate diseases. However, other researchers believe they describe the different stages of the same disease. In this case, Wernicke's encephalopathy would be described as the first stage, and then Korsakoff syndrome would be the second stage of the overall disease Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. So what causes Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome? This disease ultimately is caused by a deficiency of thiamine or vitamin B1 in the body. Thiamine plays an important role in metabolizing glucose to produce energy for the brain. An absence of thiamine therefore results in an inadequate supply of energy to the brain, which results in cell death and brain atrophy. Now there's a multitude of things that can lead to having this deficiency in thiamine, with the most common cause being chronic alcoholism, because alcohol reduces the absorption of thiamine in the body. Other things that could lead to having chronically low levels of thiamine would be malnutrition, which could result from starvation or eating disorders. Malabsorption can also lead to this deficiency, which you would see in those who have intestinal cancer. Some studies also indicate that there may be a genetic predisposition for the disease. It's possible for people to have variants in the thiamine transporter gene that allows for proper absorption of thiamine into your cells. So where is the brain damage happening in Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome? It's really important to distinguish which areas of the brain are being affected and how that relates to patient symptoms. Early on, the cerebellum is affected, which can lead to the problems that are seen with movement and balance or the ataxia symptoms. This could also explain trouble with ocular movements. Later damage is seen in the mammillary bodies. Lesions in this area are linked to memory loss. There can also be further damage to the fornix and the thalamic nuclei in Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. These are also linked to the memory loss. So all of these brain areas, the mammillary bodies, the fornix, and the thalamus are connected to the hippocampus, and we know that the hippocampus is strongly and directly implicated in memory. So when there are damages in the brain areas that are connected to the hippocampus, we can also see memory deficits happening. It's also important to know how Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome is diagnosed and what can be done from there. A diagnosis is made through obtaining detailed patient history and running a variety of specialized tests, including routine lab screens to evaluate for thiamine levels in the body. Some doctors also use neuroimaging, so CT scans or MRIs to reveal brain damage in areas that are implicated in Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. They may also have you perform neuropsychological tests that evaluate your memory abilities and your movement, so in the way that you walk and in your eyes. Once the diagnosis has been made, treatment can begin. This involves immediate administration of thiamine. Thiamine is injected intravenously so that it can be absorbed in the most effective and efficient way. This administration may continue daily or for several months. After this, a daily supplement of vitamin B1 will be taken for the rest of the patient's life. So how effective is this treatment? If treated early on, people can make a full recovery. However, in situations where the disease is farther along, treatment may only allow for partial recovery or to stop the progression of the disease. And if left untreated, unfortunately, this disease is fatal. Now I'm going to show you a quick patient experience video of a woman named Susanna who was diagnosed within the first stage of Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, so during the Wernicke encephalopathy stage. Susanna Hessler cooks healthy, eats healthy, even draws healthy. But a year ago, Susanna was near death. It just spiraled out of control. 
Suzanne has been an on-again, off-again alcoholic since she was a teenager. Every time I saw her, it was quite obvious that she'd been drinking. A court order forced her into the hospital. It was there she found out she had Wernicke encephalopathy. Her excessive drinking triggered a syndrome that causes brain damage. Short-term memory was almost non-existent. She would finish breakfast and could not tell you afterwards what she ate for breakfast. You can see from these stories that they're telling in the video that chronic alcoholism is what led to Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome for Susanna, and that the disease was causing her neurological functioning to suffer, specifically in relation to her short-term memory. This goes to show that every patient's experience with Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome and the symptoms that they present with will be different. In the next video, we'll check back to see how Susanna is doing after receiving treatment. Suzanne has been alcohol-free for one year. She was first treated with an IV of thiamine and is now on a daily dose of it. Her short-term memory is returning. I mean, I almost died. That is a place that I intend to never go back to. We can see that Susanna was definitely a success story for Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. This is likely because she received treatment in the early stages of the disease, and luckily she was able to reverse her neurological symptoms. This shows the importance of knowing the signs and symptoms of Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, the risk factors associated with it such as alcoholism, and the importance of early diagnosis. For more information on this disease, you can look up the Nova Scotia Alzheimer's Society website where they have Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome listed as a type of dementia. Thank you and here are my references.